cinco minutos. A todos e todas, o gosto de estar aqui é imenso com os nossos convidados. Vou começar a falar em inglês daqui a pouco, para se sentirem aqui bem-vindos e acolhidos, mas agradecer muito podermos estar aqui juntos. É sempre um privilégio podermos parar, termos professores, alunos e todos cooperantes, e como estamos aqui num, num grupo que acolhe quem vem e quem nos vem trazer e quem nos despertar novas refeições uma nova forma, ou porventura uma forma complementar à nossa, que é a primeira dessa nossa, sobre a educação de infância. E, de facto, we were very lucky to have you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone, to teachers, to... I understood first the two sentences. You know? Wow. That's really good. That's really good. So just saying how fortunate we were to have you, and we are to have you here. And, of course, to be together. This is also a time to stop and think about what we do, how can you make us reflect more about ourselves. Our self, our self, yeah. you know? Yes, and, and the topic is really very, very interesting. Um, and mainly, as I, we were discussing, because it's not just about children, but it's about children and everyone around them. It's about children, it's about teachers, it's about future t teachers, it's about teachers in the university. So it's about all of us together learning how to really socially and emotionally be more mm -hmm. And I, I want, uh, Maya was saying, don't present me, but I have to present <laughs> you. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just a little bit. Let me see if I can say your name well. Maya Lubaticic. No. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm trying. You like to <laughs> And uh, Tony Maglitsa. So both are coming from a, a town in a country that we don't know. I cannot yeah. say it. It will be a surprise. <laughs> I, I saw that it was question mark, so I guess I have to. Okay, this must be part of the presentation. Okay, some of the students know, but you don't say, please, because we wrote previously. So um, they are both very involved in, in pedagogy and children's. Um, way of being, of being listened to, participation, honoring the dignity of the child, but also they are teachers in the, in the university. Um, so Maya is a full teacher um, and Tony is an assistant teacher and they both work together, which is also very, very good because we need each other as, as teachers also at the university to, to become, to make it happen with a lot more strength and power with what we want to defend. Um, I, I'm just saying, going to say in Portuguese. Um, o, o, as áreas de investigação dos dois, apesar de terem percursos muito diferentes, a Maia é professora catedrática, o Tony é, é professor auxiliar, uh, juntam-se neste, neste olhar sobre a pedagogia da infância, sobre a família, sobre as questões do desenvolvimento pessoal e social, e têm feito um trabalho neste nível, tanto do ponto de vista da formação, com, uh, para, de facto, quem já está no ativo, formação contínua, etc. Portanto, eu vou-te dar já aqui a, a palavra. Vou agradecer muito por estarem cá connosco. Foi uma sorte. São destas coisas boas que nos acontecem na vida. E, e pronto, e, e, e estamos cá. I'm here for all that you need. I'm sure you can all say that. So, any help translating, any help? I'll be okay. here. You just sit and relax. <laughs> <laughs> This is good. Social emotion. <laughs> so I'll sit in the <laughs> Well, best regards, dear colleagues, dear uh, students, dear friends. Uh, thank you very much uh, for hosting us. Uh, as you can see, uh, I came from one town and one country, and it must be a surprise because we are talking, we shall talk a little bit about uh, social and emotional learning and conditions for social and emotional learning, and we shall start with this. And um, thanks, uh, Ana Teresa, a lot for um, introduction. Uh, but she forgot one most important thing, and that's it, that I am grandma with four grandchildren. <laughs> two of them uh, are uh, preschool age, and two of them are early uh, child, uh, school age, so I'm very, very, very motivated privately to talk, uh, to, to research uh, this uh, area. Uh, well, we shall try, I shall uh, try to say a few words about uh, social and emotional learning and uh, social emotional competences 
from a child or two child parent and teacher perspective. And my dear friend and colleague uh, will uh, tell you some um, more about the specific programs in that area. Well, for the beginning, just like um, as an uh, icebreaker, one small quiz. Okay, is it okay for you? Yes. yes. Well, rest up. Let's start. Do you know which country got a third place in Qatar to World Championship? <laughs> 2022. Boys, let's go. Croatia. <laughs> Croatia. One. Five points. <laughs> what country does the tie come from? You know the tie with gentlemen put uh, under their suites and they, when they want to be gentle, nice. Kravat. Very good. Ten points. <laughs> I think that we have almost winner. Uh, what country do they come from? Marco Polo, famous sailor, Nikola Tesla, physician, uh, electricity, engineer. Ivan Mestrovic, famous sculptures, City Hall in Washington. Uh, Maxim Mervica, famous piano player. Young girls and boys, two cellos. <laughs> Any idea? Try. Try again. <laughs> That's it. Uh, where is located famous Diocletian Palace? Oh, no, no, no. Split. Split. <laughs> he is a fan of Croatians. He was an Erasmus. Right? <laughs> <laughs> He's our their director for education in the Ministry of Education. Okay. Oh, yeah. so, yes. so you are in very privileged. We're very privileged. Uh, Benfica's fans fraternized with the football fans from which city in the Europe? Uh-huh. <laughs> Boys, let's go. Okay, do you need help? My husband will know it. My <laughs> son will know it. I will go there. I call the Go there because my husband and my son gave me this uh, question. <laughs> so, okay, the answer is very, very simple. We are coming from Croatia. You see, like a uh, uh, horse. And uh, split is down. This one not pretty nice. Ah, yeah, this is pretty nice. the coast, yeah. On the coast is a split. We came from split, and this is our flag. We, we are very proud of that because uh, we are an independent country last uh, 30 years ago after big war. Uh, well, this, this is our uh, old town, the Euclidean palace. Pal pal palace, I asked you for. It's beautiful. You have to come to see that. And this is our university, uh, our faculty of uh, <coughs> humanities and social uh, sciences. It's a pretty new one um, and pretty good, but not so nice as your uh, <laughs> faculty. It's gorgeous. Well, we should try to, uh, I'll try to give you some uh, very short introduction in some questions, what, why, and how. For example, why do we, children, students, parents, uh, colleagues, why we do learn? Any idea? Why do we learn? Because um, we are better persons. We know more things. We can discuss with colleagues. Uh, we open on that way some new perspectives. And it's important to, to learn. Uh, question, uh, second question, what are the competencies? It's written here. Yes. Our <laughs> knowledge, uh, our skills, our values, and our attitudes. Why is it important? to be competent in one field. Because we have better life, uh, we have some benefits, 
we are paid better, we feel better. Uh, our uh, colleagues, friends and parents, if you are in school, uh, respect us and so on. It's very good to be competent. Somebody is competent in uh, washing windows. Somebody is competent to make um, pasteria, Pastel. <laughs> Uh, I shall be competent in making that when I get a recipe one day. <laughs> Maybe my uh, husband and sons and uh, others will be happy then. Okay, and I shall feel uh, better. Uh, what, finally, how we can improve our social and emotional competences? Are they important for us? What will be better in our lives if we are socially and emotionally competent. And whom it will be better to in the same time. Uh, I hope we, we shall uh, answer that question, but I think that more, to, uh, more important topics are self-assessment and reflection. How do I feel myself? And how my colleagues, my friends, my partners um, uh, think, what they think, am I uh, socially and emotionally competent? I shall ask you uh, on the end of the lecture what you have to uh, tell me, uh, am I or I am not socially and emotionally competent? Okay, uh, what is the relation be be uh, between self social emotional competence and social emotional learning. Castle uh, gave us an answer. Castle collaborative, academic, social, emotional learning is at the same time as institution and their uh, mission is also collaborative, academic, social, emotional learning. And Castle says uh, says we envision all children and adults as self-aware, caring, responsible, engaged, and lifelong learners who work together to achieve their goals and create a more inclusive world. Uh, students will recognize some of those things, some words, we were discussing about yes. that uh, before, in the coming. before coming. Okay. Do you think it's a good idea? Do they castle think uh, well? Huh? Are they right? Yeah, I think yes. Okay. How we shall ensure that? Through a commitment to social emotional learning. For all of us, for um, our kindergartens, our children, uh, our, their parents, our colleagues, it's very important uh, to, to have self, uh, social emotionally competent teacher, preschool teacher, because I trust him, I like him, I shall give him my uh, biggest treasure, my child. If it isn't, if it, it's if that teacher is a cold person, uh, if I can't reach him, uh, if I can uh, make uh, some kind of partnership, how I can lead my child to that person? Okay, what are social emotional competences? What, I, what are they consist of? Well, uh, students try to remember responsible decision making. Did we talk uh, uh, earlier about responsibility? Okay. Social awareness, social skills, self awareness, and managing yourself. The main presumption of creating the conditions for appropriately children's or students' social-emotional learning 
is socially, emotionally competent educators and parents. And Carson says, to reach the students, teach the teachers. Uh, we were also talking about that connection, teacher and family. How to help families, how to help parents to be better or more competent parents. We, share, uh, we have to share our knowledge. We have to make opportunity to parents to learn how to uh, mm, develop parents' skills. Some of our parents doesn't know that. And they are not guilty. We are there to help them. Okay? Uh, what we have to do? It is necessary to enrich at the higher education level. We are talking also about that. Study programs that educate educators precisely in the field of acquiring social emotional competences. And much more uh, about that and much competent than me will talk later uh, Professor Tony Magritte. Okay, uh, we won't write nothing, uh, we, I won't ask you nothing, but you will have opportunity to uh, Evaluate, evaluate your social emotional competences. And um, it's an opportunity to learn what that means, really, in the practice. Okay. Well, can you rate on a scale from 1 to 10 your self-management? How are you good in impulsivity control? Do you scream any time when somebody... <laughs> or do you cry? Uh, stress management. Are you good stress manager? I, I'm thinking about your own stress, private stress. Uh, do you have good self-discipline? Are you self-motivated? Why do you study? Because mom and dad, dad expected, or you are self-motivated? Uh, did you want to study something else? Unfortunately, here you are. So what is the level for, of your self-motivation? Uh, uh, how you are good or are you good in goal setting? How are you good in organization skills? Are you satisfied with this? Second, social skills. How do I communicate? Am I frozen every time when somebody approach me? Parents, colleagues, teachers. Can I answer normally? Uh, how do I communicate anyway with colleagues? Uh, what the level of my social engagement is? Do I volunteer? Do I give myself to another who needs me? Am I good in that? Am I, am I satisfied? Okay. Am I good in developing relationships? We know for sure some persons that uh, have some relationships with other person, colleagues, students, teachers, and after week, uh, month, next year, they are broken. And then person change uh, kindergarten, for example, and the same situation uh, happens in the next, and then in next. How am I good in development, developing our, my relationships which are without for myself? Am I a good worker? I think that is a very important question for the uh, faculties at all, in general, pardon. Uh, I think that during the studies, we are very focused on ourselves. My goals, my values, uh, my marks, um, my professors. I, should, I have a sh short time, so 
so I have used it as uh, good as I can. And when we come to the labor market, we have to be team workers. Are we equipped with uh, skills for teamwork? We have to do that uh, first of the for in at university. Okay, self awareness identification of emotions. Can I identify my emotions, bad or good, bad or good? Uh, if I can't, I can't identify your emotions, child's emotions, parent emotions. Okay. Uh, is perception of myself correct? Who can help me to make more correct uh, perception of myself? Who can help me in evaluation? Uh, very important persons in my life, life, my colleagues, my family, and so on. Okay, do I recognize my forces? What I am very good in? what I have, which field, which field I have to develop. Okay, if I, I identify that, I can, can focus on that and I can work on that. I, nobody else. Okay, am I a confident person? How is my self-efficacy? Am I satisfied with that, that I see? And so on. Responsible decision making. I am good, am I good in, in the identifying problem, analyzing situation? Am I good in troubleshooting, focusing on a problem, not on colleagues and arrive and uh, environment? Am I good in evaluation? For myself, for my opinion, self-evaluation and reflection are two most important skills that we have developed through the life. Because um, if I am good in uh, self-evaluation, I can choose the topics, choose the fields that I have to improve. And also for relationships and for a teamwork, the reflection is another very, very, very important skill. How to tell my colleague, um, I like this, it was good. I think you can manage, you can think about the voice about your body posture during uh, lectures, about your eye-to-eye -eye contact. I think that you have, uh, it, or that it will be better if you uh, control your voice or the words you are um, uh, take, um, giving to uh, other persons, or the way how you approach kids in the kindergarten, okay? And normally, ethical responsibility at any, any time. Social awareness, understanding of diversity. Am I possible, am I capable to understand diversity? Do I have real, do I have empathy for persons they are, that I am in contact with, with people who suffer, with people uh, who are in need? Do I really have empathy or just decorative? And then after that, I turn around and go home. Uh, Am I capable of looking from someone else's perspective? Can I wear parents' 
shoes and be in, the, uh, in those shoes all day when he gave me the child in the morning. Am I capable? Do I uh, really respect other persons? And do I really respect time? <laughs> so uh, I have to finish for the two minutes. Is it right? Yeah? OK. So finally, are you satisfied with your results that you made with your rates? Uh, do you think is it important to develop those skills? Is it in, uh, uh, important to enable children to get uh, acquire these skills? Uh, and what will you do different to improve your social and emotional competencies? Uh, what you will do to be a new person with equipped social and developed social and emotional competencies? How do children acquire social and emotional competencies? Living together, playing together, communicating together. Uh, we are creating the environment and conditions, only that. And we are a model how they will create those uh, their <coughs> uh, And we are focused, must be focused on promoting self-assessment and self-reflection. So we have to do that. Uh, during our lectures and daily life. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Uh, what do you think? Am I a socially emotionally competent? <laughs> <laughs> I have a work a lot about that. <laughs> okay, I, I'll continue learning. My dear colleague and the professor, Professor Tony uh, Anna, do we go, go one? Uh, yes. 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 Perhaps, because it, it is, perhaps it's better. Some people, unfortunately, yeah, yeah, these colleagues go to the beginning. But perhaps it's good if you can get those perspectives that can treat each other and then have some time to discuss and reflect together. So that's good. Sounds okay? Yes? In this one, Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you. Some hello from my side. Um, first of all, thanks to uh, Ana Teresa for the opportunity and Lourdes also to be here because uh, my and I, but I will speak personally, we adore Portugal. This is our second time here and we love you, your, your people, you, your food, music, uh, everything. So it's really, really honored but more happy uh, in the hearts to be, to, to stay here and um, giving lectures to to the university like this. Uh, I think this is the beginning of a new friendship and very good collaboration because two of us are here and one of the uh, one of the our colleagues are at the, the, your school of uh, psychology right now so I'm sure and I'm inviting you to come to this beautiful uh, city and uh, faculty. Uh, I will be more focused to the uh, social emotional learning uh, in prevention, in prevention programs since I'm a special educator, social pedagogue, you know that, yeah, and gestalt therapist, and I spent most of my career working with uh, children and young people uh, with different behavioral problems, mental health problems, and their families. And uh, I uh, did uh, my PhD in prevention sciences, so yes, yeah, social emotional learning is very, very, very uh, productive, effective uh, way of dealing uh, universal uh, prevention for for all for, for, for pupils for kids for children uh, from first year but also when they are starting to show some of the behavioral problems so it's very very science based and very research as you, you will see uh, approach to, to uh, our well-being our mental health and behavioral problems um, Yes, what about uh, behavioral problems in early years? So what we know from, uh, from globally that somehow percentages of uh, uh, 9 to 12 children in early, uh, in early or early preschool age are manifesting different kind of, uh, we, we call them social emotional problems in Croatia, they are behavioral problems, uh, so they are different, uh, di different terms. I'm not sure about uh, Portugal statistics. 
uh, more and more uh, of the children are showing not just social emotional problems but also uh, psychiatric syndromes and in Croatia we did uh, some research uh, quite recent and we are around 12 to 12 percent of children that are having some uh, psychological disorder or are at risk uh, to develop some of the psychological disorders. Am I speaking too quick? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. That means you are young. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> the old people told my father told me, "Oh, you speak so so fast." Uh, yes, four uh, four percent uh, behavior problems, ADHD. So some of the uh, creation uh, prevalences. And why it's important to, to make these studies and start very early to intervene because we have many longitudinal researches showing that these early symptoms, early signs that we can notice in the early and preschool uh, years, that those kinds of signals or symptoms uh, often uh, develop in more serious problems. So it's your your role is very very important in the field of mental health and, and well-being. At this time, uh, as you can know, uh, as you know, uh, there is a set. Uh, this is the the, the the stage, the phase that we are setting our uh, uh, lichnos personality, and uh, or we go we set the child on a course of uh, maladaption. And there are, as I, as I mentioned, very different uh, research that are showing that contact problems, oppositional behaviors, uh, ADHD uh, negatively impact children long-term well-being. Uh, they are connected with uh, school problems, later work problems, uh, those kinds of, uh, those young, young people and adults are more socially excluded, uh, have poorer health, so Yes, it's really, really important field of, uh, of work. Uh, what we also know from the science and from the practice is that in, uh, when it's not treated in timely, a timely manner, uh, early, we call that early intervention, that they, they, it's connected to later with school problems and problems uh, forming quality of relationships. Um, the, the CASPI has very, uh, really, uh, really interesting uh, um, uh, studies he, uh, he was following the three-year-old uh, children with self-control deficiency uh, and he proved that they grow up to be very impu impulsive, unreliable, more antisocial, more conflicts, but the same, uh, so they are, they are quite externalizing problems, but he found also with internalizing problems that are the children that are quite uh, anxious, that they become more <coughs> passive and more depressed, uh, uh, depressive adults. So it's really, really important to intervene in this uh, in these early years. Yes, ex externalized problems in early years are, are often uh, connected with school and life failure. So we really have a lot, a lot of uh, research on this on this uh, topic. Uh, Why it's important for uh, educational system? Uh, because this early temperament, heavy, t heavy temperament, we say, uh, behavior problems somehow spanning the preschool period through the middle school, uh, evaluating information about pre uh, preschool pro uh, problem behaviors and temperament can give us uh, key components of what to do, key, key elements of the intervention, key elements for the prevention. So it's really important to to see more uh, details uh, about it and of course if we can predict uh, uh, how to uh, 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 achieve the early, early behavior problems uh, we can use this information for our uh, future interventions. Um, yes what I know and what I re have researched and what I did in my practice is that social emotional learning and social emotional appro approach and competencies are, can be an uh, extremely important part of the answer. Um, I put the, another, uh, another um, definition that I didn't mention is that, our, that the social emotional learning is a process through which uh, it, and it's consistent about knowledge, attitudes and skills. That's what uh, we discussed 
earlier, it's not important just to have uh, knowledge, but you have, to, you, have, you have to have the feeling and you have to behave like that, you have to model. Uh, because all of us, and especially children, are uh, learning uh, from the model point of view. And th those are some of the uh, core competences that already Maya mentioned. How to recognize and then manage my emotions, how to set and achieve goals, uh, how to maintain relationships. And my question to all of us is, uh, is our educational system somehow targeting this? In Croatia, I'm not so happy. How the, the kindergarten educational system is mm, still okay with this, but when they enter elementary school or high school, social emotional uh, uh, competences are quite uh, uh, aside. Uh, yes, aside, neglected. Uh, in our field for early early and school, preschool education, those are the skills that are helping children to calm, their, to calm their, uh, themselves to resolve conflicts in uh, inadequate way, in non-conflict way, how to initiate friendship and then maintain uh, those friendships, how to make some ethical and safe, uh, safe choice, choices. Uh, and uh, we've noticed through our uh, research that when children do have all of these competencies, then, then they start to contribute to their communities. So children who feel good with themselves uh, and with, uh, with their um, families and teachers, they start to contribute, become more active and engaged uh, uh, in the community. So yes, yeah, social and emotional competences will benefit uh, young children in their peer relations, school uh, readiness, well-being, so uh, a lot, a lot of potential in this field. Uh, in summary, uh, to summarize this field, um, the presence of social emotional competencies increase peer relationships, increase school readiness, uh, general well-being, of course it develops social and emotional skills. Those are the children who, whose attitudes are quite positive toward themselves and to, uh, toward others. They are more, more connected to the schools and more connected to the kindergarten and connection not, not only connection to our families, but connection to our institutions make us more, uh, more resilient, more uh, mental health, you know. So the connections and interactions and, uh, uh, yes, the uh, uh, attachments. attachments to our institutions made us also very, very, very healthy. Not, uh, not only in, in family context, but also in educational systems. And the presence of social emotional competences increase uh, academic performance and also the grades, the, the marks. And what we know from the research is that the, there are decreasing, uh, of, there is decrease of problem behaviors, contact uh, contact problems, uh, feeling of stress and especially anxiety. I'm not sure for the Portugal. In Croatia, we have a lot, a great increase of uh, anxiety in uh, in uh, young people. Uh, high school and students also. So yes, Peter and, he and his colleagues make a crazy, crazy meta, meta survey. They, uh, they, uh, they made a meta-analysis of uh, 370 studies, look at the number of children involved, and they uh, give a conclusion that social emotional learning problems yield multiple benefits and are very effective in school setting, but also if you're working in out of school uh, community services or agencies, and that they are good for children and young people with behavior problems, but also uh, without without them. So it's a different different level of prevention. Uh, Lawson and his colleagues uh, made also a, a cool survey about what uh, what are mm, extremely good elements of those programs. So each program has different elements, you know, consisting of social and emotional uh, learning, and they uh, evaluate what, uh, um, what uh, especially uh, did uh, the, 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 the difference. And they found that the social skills, so when we teach children how to uh, develop uh, friendship, how to maintain friendship, communication skills, yeah? 
that's very extremely important how to identify other feelings because I worked a lot with children and young people with behavioral problems. They go into, the, 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 the guys are going into aggressive behaviors because they read uh, wrongly the emotions of, of others. Uh, behavioral coping skills, so we live in, uh, in the days of extreme stress, ver um, I don't know, wars, uh, we have a pandemic, so the stress is all around us and how to cope those stresses is extremely important. But our, uh, our education... No. Come to Lisbon. <laughs> yes. So yes, come to stre we didn't touch, we don't, we don't tackle these uh, issues in our educational system. I, I don't know for Portugal, but I've never been taught how to, how to manage my stress. And uh, techniques of relaxation, mm -hmm. basic breathing, mindfulness is very hot. Yeah hot topic these days, <laughs> so that uh, are the core competences and core components and elements of social emotional learning programs. What else pop up important? Uh -huh, that uh, we have to have a cur curriculum that are quite mm, mm, clean about social emotional learning. That it's not, uh, we have an inter integrated curriculum in Croatia, but the more results are gained when the curriculum is strongly dedicated to social emotional learning. Uh, that, okay, that, that, that we are focused on competencies, that the teachers and other preschool personnel are of the crucial relevance, that also what we discussed earlier. Uh, it's not just about children, it's about us, and yes, as Maya said, to, to, to reach the, the children we have to teach ourselves. Um, yes, improved academic performance only when teachers, as opposed to researchers or community members, implemented self programs. So the best programs uh, were when the preschool teachers are uh, preserving mm -hmm. it. And that's quite logic. I adore when we scientists uh, proved uh, and uh, confirmed that's something that is common sense. Of course, that the children are more open and they have better relationships with uh, their teacher than when Tony or Ana Teresa starts to, to implement one of the pro uh, programs. So the idea when we do it is to teach you and then you uh, implement uh, a program. Of course, uh, pol policy, leadership and professional development uh, also are the key variables because our programs has to be funded. funded. Uh, our policy makers has to have information how this, uh, how the importance of, of all of this. Yes, and that's, that's the same. Uh, so it is uh, critical to make an intentional effort to ensure that social emotional learning is embedded in our practices, in our programs. Uh, and it has to be a strong uh, mm, uh, strongly represented and implemented uh, during our uh, <coughs> university teaching. Uh, in Croatia, at our faculty, it is still uh, somehow uh, mm, not mandatory subjects, but Maya and I are teaching through the other, through the other courses, but it would be the best uh, that we tackle these and, and provide, you with, uh, provide you with the knowledge and skills uh, already during the, the un university study. Instead of conclusion, is how do we teach social emotional learning? Because uh, we spoke uh, uh, earlier about experience, experiential learning. The best way of learning is through head, heart, and hands. And of course, if you teach social emotional learning, it shouldn't be like this. You know, ex cathedra, I, I speak, you, you stay in silence. So how do we teach that? Uh, are our uh, university professors uh, skilled uh, and are willing uh, to have this kind of openness and readiness? Uh, and we have to be sure that we acquired them. And at that point, what, what will be the golden standard? Okay, Tony has a good uh, social emotional skills and Maya don't, yeah? So uh, we have still a lot of, <laughs> still a lot of uh, questions to work, to work on. Yes, uh, are they uh, represented in our syllabus? Uh, in which account? Yes, and that's it so for now. Obrigado. <laughs> Shall we take these ten minutes we have? Or we can go on.
to discuss, to take the time that you have my Anthony here with us today that brought us so many good ways of looking at ourselves, looking at what we do, do um, in all levels, from macro to micro. Mm -hmm. And shall we engage in this discussion? And perhaps with your yes. examples or yeah, questions. Questions that come to your mind. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, uh, Hala, 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 uh, to my and Tony. Uh, I have seven questions. I'm only posing one <laughs> because I like to cooperate and work in working teams also <laughs> as a good Kazelian would say. Well, the first question is about the the teaching brain. Uh, we know more and more about the, about the learning brain, and uh, I feel that we don't know that much about the teaching brain. All brains can learn, but not all, all brains can teach. It's a special kind of brain that we have to nurture, to develop, to teach, to educate. So the first question would be, you mentioned briefly about you know, the, the, the effort you're doing in Croatia about uh, how to teach SEL to future teachers and future education. And uh, because we are on a teaching institution, I'd like you to go deeper on that and to and to share some examples you've seen. Because as we know, SEL cannot be a vitamin to a dead curriculum. It doesn't work like that. And this is no longer about um, programs or interventions. This is about whole school mm -hmm. interventions that are you know, integrated. And that's quite a challenge. It's for e I'm a psychologist. But for me, it's very easy to think on an intervention, to design a program. It's easy. The hardest part is, as you mentioned, is to make it the culture of the institution. So if you can explain more a little bit about what you know, about what you've read about it. Thank you. What a good question. Thank yeah. you so <laughs> much. <laughs> I think all of us, are, you gave words to what we were thinking as teachers. So this responsibility and compromise we have. So do you want to come up? Okay, I'll try. Well, I'll, I'll get two chairs for yeah, you. Maybe you yeah, maybe. It's okay. Yeah. Is it okay? Uh, thank you very much for uh, this question. Uh, if it sounds like, like a question from mm. professional uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> with lots of uh, experience. Uh, well, what do we do? We try to implement uh, or yeah. our two of us, not the whole university. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> whole university. Um, uh, we shall make uh, the uh, smallest mistake if we talk about us. Okay, uh, I am. Um, uh, reality, choice theory and rea reality theory terrorists. And uh, this is the uh, first start. And uh, we include that in our lectures with our students. Uh, both of us uh, have the same, uh, the same idea. The most important thing for me is to feel good in a classroom with my uh, students. What does that mean? That means that they feel comfortable, safe, uh, that uh, they can uh, ask anything they want, in any time they want. How we and, sit. Uh, how they sit, how do we uh, communicate, <coughs> uh, 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 how many times they are able to do something discuss something in small groups, change their experiences, uh, call all the others to, to uh, work together in workshops. When they feel good, uh, I feel terrific, <coughs> really. Um, when they are motivated and they said, no, I'm not agree, that's the best. And every lecture, I start with what do you expect today? And at the end, what did you get for yourself? Uh, every two or three hours of lectures, I said, OK, please tell me what do you want uh, different? Uh, usually, they say nothing. Don't, 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 don't ask nothing. Don't change nothing. Uh, because they are not uh, uh, always very motivated to participate actively and so on. 
uh, prefer to listen than see. But okay, I, I don't complain. Um, but that's the, these are, these are uh, let's say, nice things. Uh, in the, at the same time, I um, am f uh, focused on responsibility, mine and theirs. Mm -hmm. Timing, organizational structure, uh, the way of communication, no bad words, no, no voice uh, uh, screaming and other things. And um, we don't have problems. Uh, we are learning uh, about self, uh, uh, social emotional competencies doing that. Uh, and I think that the most important thing is that the uh, teacher is a model and help them. That's my way. Uh, yeah, I put it more, uh, more concrete, uh, although this is the, the, the basic and the base. Uh, so each of our uh, lectures, I don't, I'm not sure for you, but we have like uh, a le lecture and then a okay. seminar or, or exercise. Huh? So I have four hours with my students. Uh, for us it's small. Small, yeah. If you have four hours, so I, have, I usually have some lecture and then a lot of, of this. So first what we do, I'm, I'm sure, uh, I know that Maya also did it, is put them in some kind of experience. What are the experiences at the faculties? Debate, role play, individual work, self-reflection, group work, presentation, giving feedback. It's, it's really a skill. So they give you a presentation and other students give them the feedback. Not, ah, you are great, uh, <laughs> best. but what do you like? What, what did you propose uh, to, to, ch to make a change? What, what, what went wrong? Uh, I told them what what do you want uh, for your for your colleague to be uh, the best he can can be, and what message that he's great. What does that mean? Yeah. So experience. It, uh, I probably forgot uh, many of them, and then sit like this and talk, talk, talk. Usually I ask, ask, ask. <laughs> <laughs> what what did happen? How do you feel? What did you learn? How did you communicate? So a lot of question, question, question. Yeah. And yes, that's learning on so many levels, you know, self-reflecting. They, they see for myself how, how do I ask questions, how do I see, what, what do I resonate, uh, what's my energy. Yeah. So yeah, so learning, le learning through model. And what also popped up to my mind, at uh, my department of early preschool education, we um, uh, we started to implement uh, a personal portfolio. So each student uh, at the first year uh, starts to call it because we give them different materials to fill up. Uh, all my exercises uh, are some self-reflections or diaries, or they put that in this personal portfolio, so they can also see. Uh, their personal uh, uh, growth and, and learning. Uh, what's good about that is that, that they, they can follow their personal uh, growth, but also in Croatia, personal, uh, the ch each child has to have personal portfolio in, in the great kindergarten. So yeah, there are, it's al also many uh, layers of the learning. Okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for articulating so well both of you and giving us the, the floor to think how how can we change yes i think this is the base uh, yes. it, it begins with us yes. and especially if you want uh, teachers and kindergarten teachers or educators to relate in that way with children and families i think we have to start it here otherwise it doesn't make sense if you're asking for something and you are not challenging yourself to do that with your students so it's a reflective process all along. Mm -hmm. Good. And it's, uh, I can see I we're almost going to. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I think that it's also important to, to support uh, the implementation for the practice. One thing is for me to mm -hmm. do in a class and so on. And another thing is how kindergarten teacher can manage uh, a group of 
to offer the children? Mm -hmm. And how can I implement these ideas? Because it's very difficult. Very difficult. And I, I know that internships have a huge role, but to, uh, I don't know if you supervise internships and so on. Uh, and how can we do that? Because it's, um, um, I think that it's a, a domain that um, everybody thinks everybody knows. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. And it, uh, everybody do, does it uh, well, and it's not important. Uh, and we talk a little bit about that. Didactics uh, are important, math, science, and so on. And the rest is not important. Yeah, I think that. Uh, I don't know how to, to help to implement things uh, in the... Maybe, yeah. maybe, maybe I can uh, answer you. Uh, well, uh, during, uh, the after, after schooling, after uh, co uh, students uh, went to practice, they have to continue, uh, they continue to learn, li li uh, lifelong learning yeah. and so on. And uh, especially for uh, preschool teachers, um, we have educations which are uh, not so, not, uh, they are not, uh, we have some which are uh, massive, uh, 300, uh, 400 people and uh, some uh, conference and so on. But uh, those way of learning doesn't may, uh, change practice. Interaction. It's impossible, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore, we uh, used to work uh, during a uh, year uh, educations with, uh, for example, 20 per persons uh, who teach in different kindergartens, uh, preschool teachers. Okay? Mm -hmm. One time a month, we are in uh, Anna Teresa's kindergarten, and we are uh, discussing about one problem that she presents us, and which is very important for all of us. Uh, uh, we uh, use videotapes. We have permission from parents to use the pictures and uh, videotapes for just for education. And uh, we discuss all of us 20 with a um, uh, leader. Uh, we discuss about those problems. During the, uh, being in that kindergarten, uh, we change uh, our uh, perspective. How the kindergarten must look like. Uh, what I can change in my kindergarten? Uh, what is good in this practice for my colleague? And colleagues share the, their ideas and so on. But during that education, during all day, uh, we have uh, uh, time and space to develop our social and emotional uh, skills. We practice them. While we are um, solving one problem, while we are doing that, we talk uh, in good manner, in good atmosphere. We, all of us here, are zaslužni. Um, <laughs> I lost the uh, all of us here, yes, uh, all of us and our energies are crucial for our good feeling here and today and now. Is, that's it. And if we Amen. function, <laughs> and if we function like that in uh, our groups of colleagues and then share that to other colleagues during few years, uh, we can do incredible things. Um, there is one um, uh, one hour colleague, uh, Edita Slunski, from uh, Zagreb's University. She is the top of the top. 
for uh, uh, education of uh, early and preschool teachers. Top of the top in Croatia, for sure. She did some lecturing at Harvard I also. Yeah. I think uh, uh, to develop this kind of competencies and skills, uh, usually they are teached uh, in an integrative uh, curriculum because uh, there is a subject that is math, uh -huh. uh, science, but there is no subject of social, social emotion. emotion. Mm -hmm. They are teach during mm -hmm. the other subjects. Uh -huh. So I think the intention of the teachers are very important uh -huh. because when they teach math, they are just Absolutely. concerned with math, not with the mm -hmm. other skills that are transversal, these skills are transversal in math, mm -hmm. in uh, science, in uh, reading. Mm -hmm. So normally, uh, I think the problem for the teacher is to focus too much in the cognitive level mm -hmm. and not in the uh, skills and competences of the social emo emotional mm -hmm. uh, skills. So I have they need to have the intention mm -hmm. to develop those skills That's during uh, when they are learning mathematics, when they are learning physics. Or mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. And just a thinking now, you gave me an, an idea. Uh, how we as adults, as parents, as teachers, don't recognize uh, social emotional needs of children mm -hmm. when a child uh, mm, I don't know, uh, uh, don't know how to uh, take a spoon and put in the mouth. We teach him. Uh, when child uh, didn't know how to take a pencil to draw or write, we teach him. He said, yes, uh, put it like this, I think the fingers like... But when children uh, feel, sad. feel sad, we don't know what to do with that. And we said, don't be, don't cry. In Mama Croatia, will come. Don't cry. Be don't strong. Be strong. <laughs> Mama will come very soon. Don't worry. Hey, you. Or when uh, they uh, fight about one uh, car and he uh, uh, slap him, we said, don't do that. It is not uh, OK. Here, take it, and you go in the corner. We forgot that we have to teach them yeah. How to handle, handle situation. those situations? We we forgot that we think that uh, it's normal to know. Uh, math is not normal. But it's for I think teachers, even when they are uh, in, uh, in, 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 in uh, training, training, when they are training. I think we forgot a little bit this dimension, mm -hmm. and uh, we have we have to teach the, the future teachers. Uh, how to do it, uh, and I think also uh, teachers need to be self-regulated in a way that when they are working, they can work together uh, and uh, monitorize this kind of, uh, because, for example, uh, on math, all the teachers of math, they join and speak about how <laughs> what's the diversity, what's the best for. But they never sit and talk, what's the best to, for my children to be social? What is the problem? They don't sit to talk about it. They talk about the okay. best way for mathematics, the best way for another thing. Language, yeah. and, and this must be um, monitorized uh, during the working. Uh, they sh the teacher needs to be self-regulating to work these kind of skills mm -hmm. uh, that uh, they have a lot of difficult to, um, to assess. Mm -hmm. That's why they don't assess them, because they are difficult. Mm -hmm. So they, they say they are OK, they are mm -hmm. something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, pa that, that, that's partially an uh, answer to your question, Lourdes. This one, and I want to, to mention that uh, but it's, I can, when I come in two years, uh, then we can discuss <laughs> uh, in, in, uh, Next year, we agreed as uh, university professors 
that we we will do uh, small learning communities with educators, okay. with practitioners in different fields because we noticed that they have a lot of issues with mental health, inclusion. To, to, to. So each of our professors, each of us professors, took a, a lead, leading, moderating one of the small uh, learning community. Mm -hmm. So that would be, yeah. yes, maybe also the answer. Of, on your, okay. So you have to invite me in yeah. your year or two <laughs> soon to discuss the, <laughs> our experience. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I will come, okay. <laughs> I think we've passed yes, the time, yes, 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 but yes, I, I, I just wanted to, uh, we could stay. I mean, this is the well-being you were talking about. We, we started to relax. But probably somebody <laughs> has a yeah, lecture. Yeah, the, so yeah. probably someone has to come. But if, if someone needs to say something just to end, please do. Don't hesitate. Or forever. <laughs> <laughs> There is something, you just want to comment, just want to say. There is one word to say that I, um, a key word, I think it's together. We have yeah. to work together, we have to learn together, uh, respect each other so together. Together. Let's keep that in mind <laughs> for everything in our lives. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And uh, the Oscar goes too. <laughs>